2020 has been quite the year so far, not just because of the global pandemic and riots that are occurring right now, but for paleontology as well. Aside from some conferences being canceled and the new Nanuksaurus exhibit in Alaska being postponed, paleontology hasn't really been negatively affected by the pandemic as much as other fields to my knowledge. Probably because most new papers are just published online anyway and it's easy to just work on them at home without much trouble. As a result, we've got plenty of new species being described and new discoveries regarding species already described, with the latter being the case for everyone's favorite sail-backed semi-aquatic theropod Spinosaurus aegypticus. So much so, in fact, that my previous video on Spinosaurus is already outdated despite not even being a year old. Instead of including a bunch of updates in a pinned comment that most people will never see, here's a new video where I list off the major changes made to Spino since I made that list video. We'll start this video off with a pretty major finding which everyone and their moms was telling me about. Even my own mom decided to email me an article about it because she knows how much I love dinosaurs. I'm talking about, of course, Spinosaurus's new tail. For those somehow unfamiliar, a paper titled Tail Propelled Aquatic Locomotion in a Theropod Dinosaur was recently published on April 29, 2020 on Nature.com. The link to the paper will be in the description, but to sum things up, this paper describes a nearly complete tail from a subadult Spinosaurus found in the Chemchem beds in Morocco. What's interesting about this tail is the tall neural spines and elongated chevrons, which give the tail a paddle or fin shape to it. Because of this, the authors of the paper argue that this proves once and for all that Spinosaurus was at least semi-aquatic, and that it used its tail to propel itself through the water, as opposed to using its limbs as had been previously thought. This also means that Spinosaurus is the most complete dinosaur known from the Chemchem beds and the most complete Cretaceous theropod known from the entirety of continental Africa. Some currently unpublished material from fellow Spinosaur Ichthyovenator also shows the presence of tall neural spines and tail vertebrae, suggesting that this type of tail was not exclusive to Spinosaurus and might have been present in other Spinosaurs. Not all of them, of course, as Baryonyx and Suchomimus seem to have been closer to that of typical theropod tails, but perhaps the future discoveries will find more Spinosaurs with paddle-like tails, perhaps even showing a complete transition from the more terrestrial Baryonyx to the amphibious Spinosaurus. Next on the list of updates is the alleged death of two Spinosaur genera. Sigilmosasaurus and Oshalaya. Most of you likely know Sigilmosasaurus from my spinal profile, but for those unfamiliar with either of these two, Sigilmosasaurus brevicolis, or short-necked Sigilmosa lizard, was a species of spinosaur from the Chemcad beds of Morocco known from some cervical vertebrae, while Oshalaya quilombensis, or Oshalaya from Quilombo, was found in the Alcantara Formation in Brazil and known from two partial skull pieces. An even more recent paper than the last one, titled Sigilmosasaurus is Spinosaurus, a reappraisal of African Spinosaurines, once again link in the description, became available online on May 23rd, 2020 via Science Direct. In this paper, the authors argue that Sigilmosasaurus, Spinosaurus marocanus, and Oshalaya are all junior synonyms of Spinosaurus aegypticus. For Sigilmosasaurus and S. marocanus, the reason given is, is that the autapomorphies of both taxa are likely either the result of intraspecific variation or morphological changes through the axial column of a single taxon. 
The possibility of another Chemchem Spinosaurid besides Spinosaurus is brought up, but the likelihood that said Spinosaur is Seizomasasaurus is suggested as unlikely. So to everyone who is pestering me in the comments on how Sigil is actually Spino, you were right all along and I apologize for thinking you were wrong. It is also argued that since the proposed autopomorphies of Oxalea are shared with other Spinosaurs, there is no evidence suggesting it is distinct even on a species level and it is proposed as a junior synonym of Spinosaurus aegypticus suggesting that the species was present on two continents. However, I take issue with this conclusion, as do many other people, and not simply because Spinosaurus aegypticus living in South America makes no sense, because it actually kind of does considering the position of the continents during the time which Spinosaurus lived. Instead, many have argued that Oshalea would have been better off labeled as either Spinosauridae indeterminate or as a separate species of Spinosaurus. Many also take criticism with the reasoning behind the lumping of Oshalea into Spinosaurus aegypticus, and as such it should be considered separate on the species level at least. For those reasons, I will be referring to it as Spinosaurus quilombensis for now. Unfortunately, since the Quilombensis remains were very likely destroyed in the infamous fire that ravaged the National Museum of Rio de Janeiro in 2018, they cannot be analyzed directly and all research on them must be based on previous studies as well as photos and illustrations of them. As a result of this paper, I've heard a lot of people on Discord and in the YouTube comments alike claiming that this means that Sigilmosasaurus and Oshalea are dead. However, Sigilmosasaurus has gone from synonym of Spinosaurus to distinct genus several times, while Oshalea's synonymy with Spinosaurus was proposed for the first time in this paper, to my knowledge. Taxa are suggested to be synonymous all the time, and not all of them stick. The key factor determining whether a lump sticks or not is whether or not other separate studies come to the same conclusion. Sigilmosasaurus's lump seems likely to stick, so I think it's safe to say that Sigilmosasaurus as a distinct taxon is quite dead. However, Oshalea will require more material and studies surrounding it to determine whether or not it is truly distinct from Spinosaurus aegypticus on a species level or a genus level. The paper also labels tooth taxa Ostafricosaurus and Siamosaurus as dubious Spinosaurus, but that's a discussion for another day. Overall, 2020 has definitely been the year of the Spinosaurus, and it's not even over yet. I, for one, won't be surprised at all if another new Spino paper comes out with new information, and if and when that day comes, be sure to check for a pinned comment which will include any more Spinosaurus-related news that comes out this year. Before I end this video, I would also like to discuss some things regarding paleontology news in the future. Not including my own server, I am in over 10 different paleontology related servers on Discord and have made acquaintances with several people within the paleontology community. So if something news comes out, chances are I've already heard about it. There is still a good chance I'll miss something, so you're still welcome so you're still more than welcome to let me know, but please make sure no one else has mentioned anything about it first before commenting. Also, make sure to check for any pinned comments on my videos, because that's likely where I will acknowledge any new discoveries until I can make a proper video on it. I really do not mean to be rude to anybody, but it can get super annoying to have tons of people asking the exact same question over and over again. I would prefer to only answer the same question once, so try to be mindful and make sure you're the first one to ask before you do so. Please be sure to take a look at both papers in the description if you want to learn more. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And until next time, this is PaleoNerd signing out.